Hello everyone, and welcome back to the shack. And who's this? Creeping and crawling his way onto the screen. Why, it's none other than Sid the Musical Caterpillar, who lives in the Commodore 64. He looks sad. I wonder why. Perhaps it's because he's lonely. Shall we see if we can make him a friend? Oh, all right then. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCB Way. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding, PCB Way also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. OK, the SID, or Sound Interface Device, to give it its full name in its 6581 and 8580 variants, are perhaps the most well-known and well-loved programmable sound generators or sound chips that have ever been made, and they're still being stretched to their limit by demo makers today, over 40 years after they were designed. But like many other chips from that generation of computing, the SID has never been recreated one-to-one -one in chip form, and that's for one main reason. It's a mix of digital and analog components, and therefore it's expensive and complicated to produce in the small quantities the hobbyist market needs. There are modern, almost perfect replacements, such as the Arm SID we reviewed on the channel a couple of years ago, and other cheap and cheerful, but still good enough replacements for most people, like the Nano Swin SID. The Arm SID is around the £34 or $40 region, whilst the Nano Swin SID is around the £15 or under $20, but most people agree you get what you pay for, and to be fair, you can still pick up an original SID for the price of an Arm SID, but that's not really the point. The point is that eventually there won't be any more original SIDs around, so having alternatives at different price points is fantastic for the retro community. So. Today, we're looking at a relatively new SID replacement that you can build yourself if you're confident enough with SMD soldering, or get built for you if you're not. At its heart is the ridiculously cheap, powerful and readily available Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, I don't mind a bit of SMD soldering, but this gave me an opportunity to test out PCB Ways, component supply and pick and place service for PCB manufacture. Now there's a link on the Sidkick Pico GitHub page that takes you straight to the PCB Way project page and you can then simply add to cart. You can choose if you want them to supply and fit the parts, and in this case we do. And then, several days later, these arrived, which look very nice. So let's take a look under the microscope and see what the quality's like. Well, to be fair, it's pretty darn good. All of the joints seem square and nicely soldered, and there's no trace of flux. So what has been soldered on here then? Well, mainly it's a pair of the CBTD3861 level shifters, which are necessary because the two original SID variants operated at different voltage levels, with the original 6581 needing a 12 volt rail and the later 8580 needing only 9 volts. So, considering the Raspberry Pi Pico needs only 5 volts to run, it's clear what these shifters are doing taking the input, whether it's 9 volts or 12 volts, and stepping it down to 5 volts for the Pi. What that means is that the SIDKIC is compatible with all C64 and C128 mainboards with no need for jumpers, etc. Remember though, don't ever put a real SID 8580 into a board that's supposed to have a 6581, because you'll fry its little pants off and that'll be another SID gone. The only other thing on here a few resistors and capacitors, all of the clever stuff is happening on the Pico itself. So with that simple circuit board, 
this Raspberry Pi Pico, some headers and a cable to allow us to put files on the Pi, we're ready to get building. OK, whilst I'm soldering away at this, let's talk about what makes this SIDKIK tick. Well, SIDKIK is based on arguably the most accurate software-based emulation of the SID, which is a project called ReSID. And SIDKIK is based on the last stable version by the original author, version 0.16. Now, that's retro in itself, dating back to 2004. And although it's been branched into unofficial later versions over the years, it's still ostensibly the same code brilliance. If you've ever used the popular Vice emulator, then you've heard ReSID at work, and very impressive it is too. The author of ReSID is also working on an FPGA hardware implementation of the code called ReDipSID, which I'll hopefully be taking a look at in the near future. SIDKIK Pico takes the original 0.16 ReSID and extends it to include a few additional features. First of these is that, owing to the power of the Pico, this SIDKIK is able to emulate not one, but two SIDs at the same time, and in any combination. Dual 6581s, a 6581 and an 8580, or dual 8580s. There's some additional soldering to do if you want dual SIDs in your machine, so only do that if you're comfortable soldering wires to various pins on the CPU or expansion port. SIDKIK Pico has paddle and mouse support just like the ARM SID, which is something you won't find in the cheaper Nano Swin SID. And something true audiophiles will love, there's the option to run sound output through a PCM5102A DAC external digital to analog converter. That's a mouthful. Anyway, you can do that rather than through the normal audio outputs from the C64, giving you better sound quality. So why choose ReSID for this project? Well, simply because of its accuracy. And I'm going to read a direct quote from the creator's GitHub page because I don't really understand how any of this is possible, but their words seem to make it sound sensible. <clears throat> I put in a lot of work to further reverse engineer the SID chip and advance the state of the art of SID emulation in 2010 to 2011. This work was in large part based on SID die shots, photographed and stitched by Michael Huth, and re-vectorized and annotated by Tommy Lempinen, with some further analysis by Frank Wolf. Several improvements were made in the digital domain, however the major achievement was vastly more accurate emulation in the analogue domain by simulation of the actual analogue circuits, using detailed models of DACs, VCRs and op amps, op amp transfer functions were obtained by feeding and measuring voltages directly on SID filter capacitor pins. So that. Now you may or may not know, but the original SID design was intended to be a 32 voice chip, but time ran out ahead of the launch of the C64, so this was reduced to three voices, and I'm also sure that money was a factor in that decision. Technically, it would have been very possible to have that 32 voice chip because each voice was a duplicate set of logic effectively cut and pasted three times on the chip. What amazed me when I looked at the die shots of the SID was just how amazingly obvious that cut and paste replication was. You can clearly see that you've got the same logic three times in a row. If only there had been more time or money, can you imagine how amazing a 32 voice SID chip would have been. OK, so I'm nearing the end of the build now, and as you've seen, it's been a really straightforward process. Not having to mess around with the SMD pieces is a clear winner for me, and something I'll be doing more often with PCBWay. One nice thing I really liked about the process is that the engineers at PCBWay involved me all through their process, suggesting alternate parts if the exact specified part wasn't available, and sending me pictures of the part, checking orientation where it wasn't clear, and even sending me a shot of the final product before proceeding with the rest of the order. And I only ordered five parts, so this was really good service. Right, it's done. We now need to program the Pico, and like all of this so far, that's a doddle. We simply connect the Pico to this cable, and then holding down the program button, we'll plug the other end of the cable into our PC. We then have the contents of the Pico's file system showing up as a drive on our PC. All we then have to do is drop the firmware file into the root of the file system, 
wait a minute or so, and then unplug the Pico from the PC. Press the program button again, plug it back in. If the firmware file we put on there is gone, then the Pico has been reprogrammed. Let's see if it works. I think in order to do a fair comparison, I'll start with the original 6581 and we'll take a listen at two games with a mix of music and digital sound effects. The first being Ghostbusters. followed by Way of the Exploding Fist. Okay, now let's take out the 6581 and pop the arm sid in. Ghostbusters again. And now, Way of the Exploding Fist again. Okay, so now the big test. Take out the arm SID and pop in the new SID Kick Pico. It's a dial sight bigger than the 6581 and the arm SID, but trust me, it fits inside the bread bin 64, the 64C, and the 128 just fine. Right, power on. No smoke and no bang make me a happy boy so far. Let's try to invoke the menu with the command sys54301. And yep, up pops the menu, so that's working at least. We've got the 6581 selected as our SID1, although we can scroll through the options to have either the 6581 or 8580 and with or without the Digiboost fix for those games that have awkward digital FX artifacts. I'm looking at you, BMX kids. So we'll leave it as a standard 6581 and let's see if we get any sound. First, Ghostbusters. Well, that sounds just as good as the original 6581 and the arm SID to me. What do you think? Okay, way of the exploding fist next.
and that sounds just as good too. So I'm happy with that. And here's the really amazing bit. I ordered five of these with the SMD parts already soldered and the cost was $44.50 for five. The five Raspberry Picos were under $25 plus headers, solder, etc. Let's say that all five SID kicks will have cost around $70. That's $14 each. So you're getting arm SID or arguably better functionality for nano swin SID kind of money. Of course, you don't need five, but if you and a friend got five between you, that's dual SIDs each and a spare for $35 plus shipping, which of course will vary depending on where you are and how long you're willing to wait. What do you think of the SID kick? Drop me a comment to let me know. And until next time in the Retro Shack, all I have to wonder is whether my lonely little 6581 musical caterpillar is happy with his new friend. Oh, I think so. I think they're gonna get on just great. Oi! <laughs> <laughs>